The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. Hello, everyone. It's the week of July 1st, 2019. My name is Taylor Cooper, and this might be news to you. What up, everybody? Season 5, Episode 10, Might Be News, Might Be News Network. I'm Taylor Cooper. With me, as always, co-host Kev. What up, Kev? What up, guys? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, all right. You gotta, dude, you, I, I'm just tired of the, of the hello, everyone. Listen. Just because you can't get it right a single time. I, dude, I killed it the I last mean, time I did killed it. Killed it is kind of a... Killed a, it. I was a little loud. I mean, you were a little... You came in very hot. Hot. You came in hot. <laughs> hot and fast. <laughs> Fuego. You came in very hot. But, uh, hello, everyone. Mr. Steve from Might Be Brews is here tonight. What up, Mr. Steve? Yo, what's up, everybody? Steve's going to hit us with some good news. But first, I just want to welcome everybody. We've got to... Uh, just last week... We did the State of the Network address at the end of the Patreon. Very important information uh, for the Patreon listeners. Uh, we're doing exclusive things for Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash MBN Network. We're doing what tonight, Kev? After the thing. We're not, it's not even going to be on the Patreon. It's not even going to be on the, the thing, but it's only going to be Patreon video. Yeah, it's a Patreon video. video you guys can go watch. I'm going to hook up my PlayStation, PlayStation VR to the TV, and we're going to get some good shit out of, uh, I guess, Stephen Buddha's art, Stephen Taylor's. Yeah, uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Stephen Taylor. It's Mr. Steve to you. Mr. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it stuck with me. As soon as... As soon as John said it on the show, it's like, oh, that, yep, that's the one. Because remember, Steve, one of the first things that we talked about when we met was, oh, well, I gotta, I gotta figure out what my nickname is gonna be. It's done. All right, I'll Mr. take it. I'll Mr. take Mister Steve. Mister Steve. Steve, that's the one. It. That's the one for me. Because uh, you stepped in, you you handled some business for me as far as producing a few weeks back, which was major, very official. Very official. You know what I'm hoping for when we do this VR thing? What? You're a very tall guy. I'm a very tall dude. Do I have to be standing up for this? Be standing up, sitting down, but I'd rather you stand up because I'm hoping to see you fall down. <laughs> see, that's not nice. That's not nice, Kev. I don't want to fall down. All right. I it's don't a long fall down. way down. It's a very long way down. <laughs> yeah, and this shit that you're going to be wearing on your face is expensive, so please yeah. don't. <laughs> I'm saying. That's going to fall like six and a half feet. <laughs> dude i got this thing like I, was, I we were looking at it and i mean i i get this thing out and every once in a while and when i do get it out it's a blast it's a fucking blast and i my kids always want to play it and i want to i want to play it but it, it's a lot of work to get it hooked up and set up and it just takes up a lot of room but so i was just curious and i got it not this past christmas but the christmas before and it was like 350 bucks just for the headset and what you need to hook up to the PlayStation to do, do virtual reality. That's not including the PlayStation. Not including the PlayStation. Mm. So I just looked up on GameStop probably like three months ago on how much trade-in value is on it. And store credit. So store credit, not cash. Store credit, 100 bucks. I'm surprised it's that much. Wow. <sighs> Dude, store credit... For anything else, like any game is probably like just three dollars <laughs> or less, like, dude. Because I'm like one of the people who buys like physical copies of games right, usually. Right. Yep. And uh, like I don't even know why I do that because I don't trade them in because I don't get shit for them. I, I I like having the physical disc. So I mean, it's it it takes up when you download the games. It takes up a lot of room on your on your device. It takes up it just takes up space well, i've never done vr before in any way shape or form nothing ever. nothing never like not even the headsets where you put your phone into nope really never had oh, this is even neither really this nope. is so exciting i've never done anything dude, I'm like it so ho- i'm so hyped i've never done anything like because it. dude when you're wearing it you can definitely tell it's animated obviously you can tell it's animated but when you have the headset on and you can't see anything but what's in the headset right and the earphones in because I brought a pair of earbuds too. When you, when you you're just fully emerged in this everywhere, world. everywhere you look, is, everywhere you look yeah, is yeah. something, dude. Because so you can even just hook up the PlayStation VR to your PlayStation, pop Blu-ray in, and watch a movie, and it's like a 16 foot screen in front of you. Really, it's huge, huge. 
That's wild. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> That's crazy. But, That's crazy. I've but, heard of people like they have an NBA package where you can watch NBA games yeah, like you're at the front row. Yeah, do I so there's there's apps that you can download and and get little snippets before you sign up and everything. And I and I checked it out and you're like at floor level. And it, it, it's a little pixely, like it's not true HD like yeah. you're watching on your TV. Yeah. But it's cool. I mean, yeah. it's really cool. They have a concert that you're at and yeah, it's neat. It's neat. Huh. huh. But they don't they don't pay us. They but uh, but go to patreon.com slash NBN network and you can watch us make fools of ourselves later when we're not when we're done the podcast. Yeah, buddy. I'm excited about it. <clears throat> Steve, you got some good news? I got some good news. Let's do it. Hey, did you hear the news? This better be good. You want the good news or the bad news? Give me the good stuff. All right, Steve. Season five, episode ten, what do you got? All right, we got a thirteen year old who opened up a bakery so he could give pastries away to the homeless. This 13-year-old baker doesn't just serve up delicious treats to paying customers. He also serves them up to the homeless and hungry people of Washington, D.C. His name is Michael Platt. Uh, He's always loved to bake and decided uh, when he was 11 that he was going to launch his own baking business called Michael's Desserts. Uh, And you can actually check out Michael's Desserts on Instagram, Facebook, uh, they do ship, so you can order from this kid. Uh, once or twice a month, Michael travels from his home in Bowie, Maryland to D.C. to hand out baked treats to kids, adults, and families uh, that have been suffering through domestic violence and homeless uh, homelessness. Wow. So whenever you buy one item from his shop, he then donates one item to the homeless. That's so it's kind of like a one-for-one kind of thing. That's pretty cool shit that's pretty cool especially for a 13 year old uh, that started it when he was 11 so he says uh, I've always wanted to have a purpose for what I do it's about helping people not just having a purpose for yourself but thinking about how much does this touch other things that's awesome that's awesome wow it's awesome it's awesome so this this got me to thinking (laughs) son of a bitch what is Kev we'll start with you what is your favorite baked good Favorite baked good. Think, think um, like a pastry, a small item, not like a sheet cake. So I'm a fat guy. I like donuts. I like cookies. I like <laughs> well, what's number one? My number one is brownies. Anything brownies. Brownies. brownies? brownies okay. Yeah. I would have to go with marble frosted donuts from Dunkin' Donuts. Wow. Bang. Very specific. <laughs> I'm going the uh, apple fritter from Shady Maple. Oh, oh man, Ooh. Shady Maple, Shady Maple, that's my jam. Whoa, it's a good one. Kids like to go up there for breakfast. We can, we can do some work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so our next story, we've got. Uh, if you've been paying attention to the news, you might have heard on this past Wednesday, it was the Anthony Bourdain's birthday, um, and a couple of his chef friends were calling it uh, a day to celebrate Anthony Bourdain. Uh, he committed suicide in 2018. Um, but it has sparked a new movement to care for the mental health of restaurant workers. Um, restaurants across Sacramento are preparing to launch a pilot program of I Got Your Back. Uh, it's a project over the course of the next two months. And basically what this is, is different chefs looking out for each other. Um, they have a program in place where they have a anonymous box that at the start of the shift, you drop your mood into you're feeling pissed you're feeling happy you're feeling sad and it's kind of a way for supervisors to keep their eye out on their employees when you see a lot of employees having sad days or right. frustrated days th- that kind of stress can start to build up on you over time and Just they're like, hoping to catch it before it gets to the point of where anthony Bourdain, you know took his life wow yeah so i heard something about him uh, uh recently and his favorite meal his favorite meal so I forget what country it's in, but they take baby songbirds and they drown them in rum and let them soak in rum. Brandy. Brandy. Yeah. Brandy. That's what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. You heard it on Foundation Radio exclusively on the Mighty News Network. Was that hit them? I yeah. thought that was impulsive, but continue. <laughs> Oops! Shout out to Foundation Radio. <laughs> Foundation Radio. Go check out the latest episode. <laughs> it was literally their latest episode. Oops. But it was a good episode. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Oops. <laughs> I feel like an asshole now. 
Did you guys watch Bourdain when he was on? Did you watch the Bourdain show? Uh, occasionally Bourdain I did, yeah. I'm not like a huge like travel cooking show guy, but um, yeah, I watched he, it a few he times. He wasn't cooking. He was going to just random places well, yeah, and yeah, yeah. crazy well, shit. That's what I mean, though. But they always like talked about how they made the meals and things like that. My favorite one is Bizarre Foods with the bald-headed guy. Andrew Zimmerman. Yes. That's Zimmerman. It's not Zimmerman. It's Zimmern. Zimmern. Something like Zimmern. that. Zimmern. So the last story, Kev, I figured this would be a little close to you. Uh, a boy gets a custom gritty prosthetic leg, yep. and he got a surprise from Gritty himself. Yeah, they brought brought him his own jersey. So they brought him his own jersey. So this boy had uh, he gets different prosthetic legs every year because he is. I want to can't find his age right here. I believe he was eight. So every year as he grows. He has to get new prosthetic legs because right, he's growing because he's growing. So he one of the prosthetic legs is orange and black. He's a big Flyers flan, fan. And uh, when he got his last set, Gritty came, stopped by, gave him a hockey puck, wow. a jersey, a bobblehead and uh, and hung out with him for a little bit. That's dope. See, Gritty is a fucking national treasure. I'm so sorry, Foundation Radio. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was like actually it was like right after their break and it was like this huge thing and I just thought that you heard it there and didn't know that you heard it there. I can't fucking believe myself. But at least he's listening to the network. Yeah, at least he is. I mean, I know he is. I, he hasn't said anything about what we've said on him said about him on Might Be Brew, so maybe he hasn't gotten us yet. No, maybe he hasn't gotten that far yet. What'd you say? Don't worry no, about it. Listen, listen to the and network. find out, you stupid son of a bitch. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh my first story. Great job tonight on Good News, by Thanks, the way. Thanks, sir. Fantastic. Thank you for filling in on that. Um, my, my first story tonight, I have I have a few of them. I have, I have, some of them are good, some of them are bad, so bear with me. This first one's a doozy, because I didn't know anything about it. And as we're sitting here recording, uh, this time-space continuum is Friday, and this is kind of a developing thing. Uh, Attorney General William Barr uh, declared a public safety emergency in Alaska on Friday, directing more than $10 million in immediate law enforcement aid uh, to largely rural communities ravaged by domestic violence and sexual abuse in Alaska. Alaska is a sprawling state with a population about the size of Seattle, but staggering, but a staggering 59% of adult women in Alaska have experienced intimate partner violence or sexual violence, or both. Uh, a federal direct, uh, declaration of this kind is, is the first of its kind for Alaska. Um, Why is the number so high in Alaska? Because there's like six people living there? <coughs> I don't know. Uh, but <clears throat> apparently it's a really big deal. Uh, earlier this week, USA Today detailed the staggering level of violence directed against women in Alaska, where 59% of adult women have experienced domestic violence sexual abuse or both in their lifetimes and where uh, child sexual assault is nearly six times the national average of those victimized. Nearly 30% had no help. And even if they have less people, the per- it's the percentage that's two out of every three women. And the problem is that a lot of it's, you know, nature, rural areas, not, a, not big police departments, not big, you know, municipalities, towns, and things like that. I mean, there are towns and cities There's a lot of drug in issues in Alaska, too. There's a lot of problems in Alaska, and nobody talks about it because it's, like, away from everything. But you're also fucking dealing with a place. I mean, there's a lot of issues with, uh, I, I mean, I know that people have lived in Alaska a long time. I get that. But why, and you don't want to move away from where you grew up and where your heritage is and all that stuff. I I, I understand that as well. But you're living in a place that is light all the time, half the year, and dark all the time, half the year. Fuck that. As part of the directive, the Attorney General also ordered the FBI and other Justice Department components to submit plans within the next 30 days to further support the federal effort. So he's got... He's got all hands on deck on this right now. As he should. I mean, this is a big deal. And, like, I mean, I feel like the only story that I've really read about in the national media recently about Alaska, 
before this was the fact that they they still have blockbusters up there. Yeah, the last blockbuster the, on Earth is in, is is in, in Alaska. Alaska. Is in Alaska because they don't have great internet up there. There's like it's a whole different ball game up there than what we're used to here. You know what I mean? I'm not you saying can't even that, play Call of Duty. <laughs> I mean, why would you want to live there? The whole situation's crazy. I, but I just never think about Alaska. No, that's that's my point by that. Saying that is just that like there's nothing. There's no pro teams in Alaska. There's no nothing in Alaska that I ever hear about or see on TV. So when something catch. like this comes on, comes out about like that's crazy to me. Deadliest catch, I think, is the only time I think of Alaska whenever that's on. Right? Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know. Fifty nine percent of of women up there. That's uh, that's staggering. Next story. This also happened today as we're recording. The young neo Nazi who murdered Heather Hare in Charlottesville, uh, James Alex Fields, is twenty two years old. Uh, he. Ran over. He drove his car into that big crowd. You remember that, Kevin? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? He, uh, Heather Hare, died that day. Um, he was found. Uh, he wounded 35 others when he drove into the crowd uh, in Charlottesville, Virginia. He pled. He pled guilty to 29 federal hate crime charges to avoid the death penalty. He was uh, also convicted in December on state charges, including first degree murder. And a jury recommended he spend uh, life plus 419 years in state, Holy in state shit. prison. <clears throat> in state prison. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I know that they're still looking for some people that were involved in like crazy violent acts down there. But um, this one was by far the like the biggest like spotlight. That was a crazy day for America. And I'm glad that there's there's some closure, you know, starting yeah. to happen with this. Yeah. Anyway, Kev, do you have something to say? No. Okay. I thought you did. This next one I have is an update from something we talked a few, uh, about a few weeks ago. I don't remember what episode it was, Kev, but do you remember when we talked about there's weird uh, radio signals coming from like a distant galaxy Man far, far away? away. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And they just didn't know where it was coming from yeah. or nothing about it. Uh, apparently, for the first time, the origin of a single radio pulse has been pinpointed to a distant galaxy several billion light years away. And we can fucking, ha- we have technology that can hear it. That's crazy. The cause of the bursts remain unknown, but the ability to determine their exact location is a big leap towards solving this mystery. The fast radio burst, a very short-lived pulse of radio waves that comes from across the universe, has been identified as originating from a Milky Way-sized galaxy some 3.6 billion light years away. Good job, NASA. <laughs> So it's three point three point six or three point eight. I don't. I don't even think it matters at this Let's point. Say but three point six billion. Light, three point six away. billion light years. Yeah. So the radio signal does not travel as fast as the light. Correct. So the person that already transmitted this is dead, or God. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> what do you, what do you, it could be anything. I mean, the, the they don't know obviously what it is. It's coming from another. You so you pinpointed it to a galaxy that is mad far well, the fact away. That, the fact that they found where it is, is you're talking dope, billions though. of light years. Correct. Like we, like none of us could ever go. Earth would be gone by the time we get there, dude. We you, you so, would be gone by the time you get there. For sure. Dude, m- m- me, my kids, my kids' kids, my kids' kids' kids, my kids' 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 kids would be gone by the time that we get there. No doubt. Like, for you're talking billions of light years. How long is one light year? Dude, we went over this when we talked about the season last one. Time, I, I thought it was season one we talked no, about it. No, this was like. You mean like how many miles is a light year? No. How, uh, how long does it take to travel? Travel there? a light year. I mean, oh. It's like. Look it up right now. You guys have phones you can use. I don't know if I'm on your Wi-Fi. Yes, I'm I am. I don't want to move on with the same story. Keep, How long is looking. one light year? Are you fucking <laughs> speaking to your phone? <laughs> 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 you 
<laughs> Son of a bitch. It's <laughs> I lost it. It's man far. <laughs> <laughs> it's man far. I'm not sure. Was it, would it be better to hear the typing? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or would it be, is it better to hear him ask Alexa? <laughs> 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 she's gonna she's gonna talk while he types it. You're one of those kids. Oh yeah. Fast radio bursts less than, last less than a millisecond, making it difficult to accurately determine where they have come from. But they found it since 2007. Just 85 cosmic radio waves of uh, bursts have been detected. <clears throat> Most are one-offs, but a small amount are repeaters, uh, which recur in the same place. In this case, the fast radio burst known officially as FRB 180924 was a simple burst, unlike the others that can flash multiple times over an extended period. (laughs) (laughs) miles. (laughs) Wow. Can you repeat that? (laughs) Five, eight, seven... (laughs) Eight comma four nine nine comma eight one four comma two one zero point zero one miles. Wow. So you're talking five billion more than that. How many billions are that's a quadrillion kabillion? It's one. (laughs) It's one of them. It's three point six billion of them. Billion of those. Well, the fact that we that they think that they know where it's coming from is pretty pretty impressive. But yeah, we will never ever know what exactly is out there, right? I mean, I don't foresee them coming up with some kind of crazy telescope technology that can zoom in <laughs> three point six billion light years away. I don't know. Maybe uh, upon reaching Earth, uh, these pulses are mere uh, electromagnetic whispers that require sensitive radio tele- telescopes to detect. The discovery was made with a new radio telescope in Western Australia and later confirmed using other telescopes in Chile and Hawaii. So it's mad real. So what are they actually seeing through these telescopes? Just They're just picking up dots? the radio wave. Yeah, it's just dots, basically. But they've traced, they think, where it's coming from. So now, just listening to some of the other shows, I think I might be in the minority do you guys think this is coming from a being, I mean, an it could alien, be. it could uh, be. something? It's could coming be. from something. Obviously, something's got to be out there to transmit it. The fact that it's repeating is is kind of interesting to me because, like, if like they said, some of them are one offs, which to me could be a star exploding or who knows what. Something hitting something, something, you know, that just happens to travel 3.6 billion light years away and land in our, you know, in the realm of these telescopes picking it up. But the fact that it's coming from some place that we can actually trace it to and the fact that it's repeating itself is pretty interesting to me. You believe in aliens? I don't. No. Like I said, I think I'm in the minority on this one. Like skeptic. not at all. Skeptic. You're skeptic or you're skeptic, meaning you can be changed. I I can be all I can always be changed. By open, open-minded. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very open-minded. I just I feel like with a lot of the UFO talk, the fact that there's no good video evidence of some of this stuff is a little staggering to me. The amount of video cameras that are around this world, the fact that everyone has one in their pocket right now, and we still don't have like a good video of something that gives me a little bit of pause. There's been some there's, there's been, been some, some some interesting things. I you know, nothing to me that like proves wholeheartedly that right. wow, this is happening. But also there's a lot of new things that have been coming out that I haven't had the chance to check out yet, which I need to. Bob Pro- Lazar Netflix. I hear like the Netflix. Project Green Book, I think is what it's called, is something big to watch. Uh, I don't know. They mentioned it a lot on the most recent episode of Novak and Franz. Did you get a chance to listen to I, that? I'm, I'm like 90% through it. It's very interesting stuff. The other thing that, that pushes me away from it is I don't think our government would be able to keep that kind of secret. Uh, I know they're looking into it and they're looking into these objects that they might not exactly know what they are right at that second. But for them to to make the leap from that to alien body for me is a little far. See, to me, uh, if what they're saying is true, 
about what they're seeing. I don't believe we have anything of theirs. I don't think we have a ship. I don't think we have a body. If if you think about it, I mean, the the maneuvers that they talked about in that show where it was 20-some thousand feet in the air, goes down to the sea level in 28 Less than less than a Point second. Seven seconds. Point seven seconds. So, if you think about something, they can do that. They can bend the rules of everything that we know possible to that level. I just seriously doubt at any point in our human history we've had technology that could even touch that thing. So there was no recording of that. It was just that guy saw it on no, his radar. No, there's recordings of that. There's radar recording. There's radar <laughs> recordings, and then there's there's pictures from his plane. I believe. See that I gotta look look a little deeper. It, the the we talked about it on the show and I believe I posted it on the Facebook but it was probably a good few weeks ago I'll try and find the article for you Steve but it his his uh experience the guy that was on our show uh his experience inspired an article and also inspired the government to acknowledge the fact that they've seen and are investigating things that they can't really explain I definitely think they're looking into it yeah well I think that, yeah a lot of things are going to a lot of things have been coming out and like they were talking about on that show is that they, they feel like they, things like that have legitimized the idea, the possibility that something like that is out there. Something's out there. Something is out there. It's just a question of if it's something what? that can come here. Right. Yeah. See, I think of how fragile our lives are, how fragile a human is. And how many different things had to happen in the right order for there to be humans and how things had to evolve. And if your body temperature goes six degrees too high, you're dead. Right. Like how perfect the earth had to be for uh, to support that kind of life. And I feel like there's so many different variables that had to go in to create what we have. The chances of that happening someplace else are low. Uh I, I said know. I said I think I'm going to be in the minority on this one. That's well, I, I think I think that the and that, and that's fine. I also think that the uh, the infinite vastness of space, the possibilities are often obviously infinite as well. And there's uh, a lot of space out there. Yeah, I mean, just look at Star Wars, dude. There's some Chewbacca's out there. I want to hang. Dude, there's a lot of things out there that look just like us, according to Star Wars. There are. I don't know if they're human. Pizza the Hut. <laughs> Come on, space balls. Let's go. You know, we know what space balls are. The fact that you like, you see, Kev, Kev knows all about space balls, but you've never seen an actual Star Wars. I've movie. seen Star Wars. Have you seen all, all of them? Not all no. of them. No. No. Which ones have you seen? I don't even remember. I know I saw episode one in theaters. I saw when they remade the 70s ones in like the 90s and yeah, re released yeah. them. Yeah. I went and saw a couple in the theaters then. Yeah. They did a good job with that. Yeah. Yeah. But space balls is way better than Star Wars. That's just silly. That's silly talk. Come on. He, no, he jammed the radar. It's kind of ridiculous. Jammed the radar. We ain't found shit. I know. It's a good movie. I'm not. It's a good movie. Don't, don't fucking comb the whole desert. Don't, don't, put, go. don't put me in the position where I have to attack Spaceballs. <laughs> Spaceballs is a great movie. I don't have to attack Spaceballs to defend Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars is. Uh, I can't wait to see the end of it. Oh, my God. Christmas. Christmas. My kids are already hyped. They just said, and I guess this is news too. Um, I'm just kind of killing time for break because we're like a minute away from it. But um, the they said recently, uh, Ray, mm -hmm. she said that uh, she was asked if she's going to be in the next trilogy. She said no. So and I, and I, that's kind of something that I already knew. But they that this is just confirming that that she has no plans being in the next one. I think this. I think they're going to make a cut. I yeah, think they're definitely going to make a cut. They've been talking about it because they're doing other projects past that, and the Game of Thrones guys are doing it. The new, the new trilogy. Nice. I don't know. I'm excited for it. I need a new story. What? Dom. Kev. <laughs> Movie. Hey, you. I. Hater. Your boys would love it. I bet. Star Wars. Yeah, they no. don't. They're not into Star Wars at all. No. Really. Not at all. Nothing. Well, my kids would rather kick the soccer ball around. Hey, I guess that's, that's cool. That's yeah. bad parenting by you. <laughs> <laughs> They'd rather go outside and play. <laughs> yeah. How dare you, Kevin? 
All right, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we got What's the Point Late Review. So you've been listening to the Might Be News Network, but you still can't get enough each week? Become our patron on Patreon. Head to patreon.com slash MBN Network to become a patron and get exclusive content now. For as little as $5 per month, you'll get access to extended episodes of all your favorite shows, as well as perks including MBN merch and monthly giveaways. Just want to support the network? Become a patron for as much or as little as you'd like. Patreon.com slash MBN Network. Two hours of bonus content each week guaranteed. Your contributions will help make the Might Be News Network bigger and better Welcome than back ever to Might Be News. <laughs> Patreon.com slash MBN Network. Season 5, Network. episode 10. Co-host Kev's here. You're always pussy. Fuck off. <laughs> Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve in the house. Wow. Mr. Steve's here. I, uh, listen, this past week, I did something crazy. What? I never did it before in my life because it's terrifying. Is this your point? No, it's not. But okay. I'm just going to tell you this right now. Just okay. talking. Just just guy talk. Yeah, it's just between us. Secret time. No. I went to a chiropractor this week. Never been before in my life. And it was craziest. It, was, it wasn't the craziest thing I ever did, but like I was bugging. He uh, cracked crack you up? Yeah, he cracked, yeah he, cracked, he cracked me up. <laughs> it was wild, Kev. Have you ever been? Yes. You have? Yes. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Steve, have you ever been? Never been. Never. I like I'm not like I don't really like crack my knuckles all oh, like that. Dude, I crack everything. I, I crack you know what I mean? I don't really do any of that shit. Like, like occasionally I will, but like this bone right here, I can crack this. Yeah. Oh, oh it's gross, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you do it up by the mic? Yeah, that was a fail. Fail, Kev. <laughs> I still heard it through my headphones. It's gross. Ew, uh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gross. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's not like offensive to me. It's just like, I, I don't know. I'm, I've am i never ever cracked my neck before. I, have uh, my neck I, I can't crack my neck. And when they do it, it's fucking wild. Yeah. It's weird, man. Well, I don't know. I just had to share that with you guys. We're going to talk more about it on the Patreon half hour. But uh, that was bugged out to me. I feel, I, I feel good, though. You set you straight? You feel good? I feel, I mean, yeah. I got to nice. go back, but it's it's. You know, of course, you got to go back because it's a chiropractor. It's not a that's fucking up. doctor. That's, that's where they get you. Where they get you. All right, what's the point? Here we go. What's the point? Is there a point to this? What is your point? Are you just going to sit there and look stupid? All right, Steve, your point this week, you got to go first. I, I'm looking at your point right now. You, as, as you should be. Uh, we said it's a little bringing bruise to the news. Yeah. So I brought a little bazinga. <laughs> Bruise to the news. Bruise to the news. I brought a little friend of the Kolsch. So this is from East Branch. We have the East Branch guys on Might Be Bruise for anybody that's listened to both programs. And that is a monstrous zebra can. So <laughs> I, as we were talking, this is a crowler. It's huge. Okay. So in the olden days, we used to bring our growlers to a brewery. Which, if you've seen the big glass yep. bottles, so those are 64 ounce victory. Lots of people have them. So those are 64 ounces. To me, that's a lot of beer to have in a sitting. Uh, uh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> so if I was going to a bottle share where there's six people there, cool. The, the, growl, the growler is a, is a good thing. But if I'm just having a beer by myself on a Friday night, maybe I'm having two, two and a half. To me, this size is a lot more manageable. So what they do is they purge these cans with CO2, make sure they're nice and uh, and clean. They fill them up right from the tap, and they can it right in front of you. So this is right from the bar tonight. The guy poured it right off the keg, sealed up the can, hand it to me. Oh, really? Really. That's wild. So this is a collaboration between East Branch and Tired Hands out of Ardmore. Uh, and they took their Bach the East mm. Branch Kolsch that we like so much and uh, did a little tired hands magic to it. I don't exactly know what they did, but we'll uh, we'll give it a taste here and find out. Brews on the news. I Brews love on it. on the news coming around. Still pours that nice clear color that the, uh, the, the Der Bach has. So if you are listening to the show and you're unfamiliar with Might Be Brews, what's wrong with you? It's Mr. Steve. And my brother John. What up, John? And uh, 
and myself and a plethora of guests. And we sit around, we, we drink a bunch of different beers, and we talk about them. Cheers. Cheers. All right, might be news. Brews on the news real quick. Uh, so we'll see what kind of Tired Hands influence had on the uh, on the Kolsch here. I like that. It's nice. Nice. Good. Kev, what do you think? Um, Kev's unimpressed. <laughs> so it's not bad, right. but it's not, yo, I got to get some of that. Yeah. So, so to me, it tasted like they took the debak and they added a little funkiness to it. There might be a little Brett in there, which is that kind of funky kind of taste you might be getting. Excuse me? Brett. Brett is, a, is an additive that gives beer a funkier taste. Okay. For without going into like a twenty five minute explanation. You want me to go into an explanation as to why how much did that cost you? It was like twelve bucks, thirteen bucks. Twelve bucks for how many 30, ounces? Thirty two ounces. And how many Miller lights in that? Well, if you're doing pounder cans, it would be two. No. Twelve ounce cans. Twelve ounce cans. Twelve and a thirty two, two and a half. Two and a half cans. So I can get two and a half cans of Miller Lite for three dollars. Congratulations, it, it, dude! Uh, to, uh, to me, I mean, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong; it is not bad. But I don't taste anything that wows me. Okay, I just don't. That's fine. That's fair enough. I'm tasting a little like white wine, almost just like a little white grape kind of kind of flavor to it. Yeah, I, I'm picking up a little bit of grape to it or something. I can, uh, I don't like it as much as the Debrac, but I give agree. this I give this a three seven five. I go four four. I could definitely drink this. Okay, a lot of it, a lot of it. a lot of it, a lot of it. Party Kev's wild. Two ounce of it. No, Party Kev's wild. Did no, you drink that whole can? Did you drink this whole thing? No, you can't. Yeah, I if I didn't have to drive tonight, yeah, I could. Yeah. We could have shotgun that for you. My stomach would Ooh. be Ooh. just explode. <laughs> it's gross, Kev. So my point is, uh, go out, drink more beer, and uh, listen to Mighty Bruce. Yo, I love it. Boom, good I job. Love it. Bruce on the news. Kev, what's your point? Okay, dude, I saw this crazy story. Um, this family out of Kansas, yeah, fifteen-year-old boy was out playing with his friends outside, and his mother hears him scream. Kid's name is Eli Gregg. That's what the 15-year-old kid's name is. Hears him scream, and she walks out. This is obviously an x-ray. Walks out to see this. What is that? 10-inch knife in his face. Wow, look at that. Bow. Wow. Is that through the nose? Yeah, you got to send that to me so I can post it on the thing. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll find it tonight, and I'll post it. Um, but I just found the story tonight. And, oh, wow. Okay. And... and I was blown away by the story. This knife was less than centimeters from a major artery, and the doctors were able to get the knife out, and the kid is fine. The kid is fine. That's straight in the in the front of his straight face. Straight in the fa- front of his face. Straight in the front face. Of, like it looks like it's going up his nose. Straight up. Yeah. They didn't show any pictures of it actually. Show me like, that again. They didn't show any pictures of it actually like yeah of course of not. his face yeah, yeah yeah but did they say like were they playing was yeah, he running with the knife and like they, did yeah, somebody they, like say i'm gonna stab you with this knife look at that you How got that chicken in there you gotta post that they me. didn't say they didn't say post that but i'll you know I'll, uh, when i get home and i find the article because i just took a screenshot of it yeah, yeah, yeah and um i'll post it on might be news but this kid greg 15 years old wound up getting a knife in his face and it was less than centimeters from a major artery in his brain the knife was in his brain doctors got it out he re- he's recovering and doing well so he's 15 yeah we all know 15 year old boys are pretty much the worst creatures on the face of the planet right mm-hmm. what is his new nickname at school knife face knife um, face um knife brain <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's got to be harder than that. <laughs> Depends on how, who he is as a person, I suppose. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't imagine. If he's dude, an I, asshole, you give him a, a shitty nickname. Dude, I, I, you have kids. I have you kids. have kids. 
I have kids. I wonder what like happened though. It happened while they were playing. Yeah, just, hang, just having fun. And Somebody running a, around with a knife. Yeah, you have a dog. What if you walked out to see your kid with laying, knife. screaming, or whatever? They're laying on the ground, freaking out with a knife coming out of their face. And you have to be smart enough to know. Don't pull that out. Yeah, right. Because you could do some damage. That's your first reaction would be get that the get fuck that, out of your yeah. face. Yeah. Why is there a knife in your face? Let me <laughs> remove that from your face. Let me help, help me help you. <laughs> Dude, that's that's intense. Dude, crazy. Oh, I bug. I bug. That's intense. Uh, my point tonight. Very good, Kev. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's a good point. <laughs> It was. It literally was, it was a, a point. point. It was, it was a, <laughs> very sharp. It was a Kev. Point. It was very sharp tonight, Kev. Very sharp tonight. Uh, you we you were on the edge go. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Say it though. Uh, my my point tonight is that Illinois uh, is the eleventh state to uh, legalize recreational marijuana. Illinois has just happened. Yeah. I didn't know that. Just happened, and they're working on. Uh, the getting minor drug charges expunged for more than seven uh, seven hundred and seventy thousand people. So I understand the point of it. I, I I get the point of expunging the 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 people that are in jail for drug possession, this and that, and when it's pot. Mm-hmm. I don't agree with them being in jail for fucking pot. I don't, but. At the end of the day, you broke the law, and they're saving tax money by getting these people out of jail, and that's great and everything as well. But the law was broken when it was broken. Do you think they should come out of jail? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I do. All right. I kind of hear what you're saying. It was the law. You broke it. Yeah. Well, all right. So if you're in jail for it right now. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, the shit becomes legal and they're working on getting you out. You served time. You right. paid the cost. Right. Chances are you paid a lawyer or maybe not, but you, you still, you were still punished for it. And obviously like we, you, you already said like the whole going to jail for weed is dumb as shit. Anyway, yeah, it's stupid. It's dumb as shit. But the law was what the law was when you broke it. Fuck it. Fucking <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, it, what's done is done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that's like, what I'm trying to say. Now it's done. Now it's done. Done. You know what I mean? <laughs> now it's done. Done. Now it doesn't matter that, that you did that at all. Okay. I mean, they're not gonna like do this very often. It's not like they're gonna like change the rules on drunk driving or something, right? They're not gonna do. Well, that. they shouldn't because that's yeah. killing people. They're not gonna. They're not gonna change the rules. I mean, they might do it. It's already starting to happen with with shrooms. It's already starting to happen. You see it. I people, mean, dude. I, I okay. I I have all right. I don't have a problem with people walking around when they're high. I don't. I don't at all. I mean, right. they're usually calmer. They're usually just fucking hungry. They don't cause problems. I have a little bit of problem people walking around when they're drunk. They act a fool. They're fucking loud and belligerent. They're yep. fucking acting a fool. I don't really know how I feel with people walking around while they're fucking tripping shrooms. Like, no, thank you. I mean, people yeah. could yeah. fucking straight up bug out and freak out. It's true. Really should probably have your safe space for that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but people do dumb things. They Come do. on. <laughs> they do. They do. I don't know. I think you would see far more people walking around just like stoned than you would see people walking around tripping balls. Right. I I agree with that. But we don't need to legalize them. I mean, people were legalizing pot here because it's not a fucking big deal. It's fucking pot there's medical benefits to shrooms as well though but they're also doing it different now they're like doing this microdose thing which i don't know much about so i'm not gonna really speak on it you take enough microdoses you're gonna take a full dose i get you <laughs> but if you're taking if you're just doing it for microdosing though I mean, you, you're kind of stockpiling on shit you're, you're rationing it at least you know i don't know kev you gotta be it's tough times right now yeah i'm not down with legalizing shrooms what about anything else no it no nothing else 
I mean, I'm okay with pot being legalized. I mean, they're doing like uh, these safe injection sites. Like people are no, about. no. You're not. Yeah, let's that. give people the safe place to shoot up. That's also, but it's a. Uh, it could be uh, a, a, a turning place. You know, a turning point for somebody going in there, realizing, you know, seeing seeing the the people around them getting help. It's not like they're just doing that to just do it. They're 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 there just to make sure that these people don't die. I don't know how I feel about it, Steve. I don't like it. I, I kind of see the point of the safe injection sites because are we helping somebody not get uh, somebody's going to do drugs if they're going to do drugs? Yeah. It, it, if their mind is set, they're going to do it. So if we're giving them clean needles and clean stuff, is that saving us from having to pay for medical issues down the line? Right. I don't know. I don't know either. I know that this that's, this gives um, you know people just a place to hopefully turn themselves around. Obviously, it's not the immediate objective when you walk in there, but you know. Uh, see, I, I I don't I don't see it as a place for I don't see it as a spot for people to turn themselves around because, like Steve just said, they got it in their mind that they're going to do drugs. They're going to do drugs whether they got a safe spot or not. Maybe, maybe not. Everybody hits rock bottom sometime. You just never know when that is, and it's different for everybody, right? Fair enough. I mean, something like that to me, that sounds like a rock bottom situation. Because normally I would be by myself doing some dumb shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going in there. I'm I'm showing everybody. That's something that not a lot of addicts like necessarily want to flaunt around. Necessarily, I don't know. Like I said, it's different for everybody. But. I don't know. I I feel indifferent about it, but but I do think that legalizing recreational shit is uh, weed is is obviously the shit. There's <laughs> states there's states that are clearing a billion dollars with revenue from it. Yeah, absolutely. One, Colorado just did it. They just cleared a billion dollars. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, it's you imagine a the, lot of dope. You imagine the good that you can do with that. I don't. I don't. When you say that's pot as dope i don't think of it like that <laughs> it's okay heroin is dope <laughs> that's a lot of weed <laughs> there <you> go. <laughs> <laughs> i mean like you think about it just the uh just the tax revenue from that alone can do a lot of good on like a local government level national level if it was ever like that which i think it's coming i think it's going to be in the next i, I mean i i can't see it Going more than like another five to ten years. Two. Before, before it's just done, done. Two. Two years? Two years everywhere. everywhere. Two ye- I bet you, mark my words on the on on the podcast. Write it down. Wow. Episode 10, season five. There you go. The next two years, it'll be completely legal in the state of Pennsylvania. I th- uh, I think you're right about that. I thought you were going. I thought you were going national. Yeah, no, 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 I was no, like, no, no, oh. No. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I think five to ten years for the national level. Okay. There's still going to be like some holdouts. Yeah. There's maybe. still going to be like Alabama. Yeah, something dumb. Dude, the, the whole, oh, no, no, all I'm just the, talking about on a federal level. Like okay. before the federal government's just like, you know what? Fuck that. We're good. All the bottom states, if you look at the map, all the bottom states except for Florida still don't have medical. Yeah. Yep. All the southern states, yep. including Texas. Well, states are still going to be able to I believe. do what they want. Just on a federal level, it doesn't matter. Right. The feds can still come in and bust pot dispensaries. They want to because they still have to do it legally. It's fucking waste of money. <laughs> well, the whole drug, on, the war on drugs is a waste of money, Kev. Locking people up for weed. What's your point? That was my point. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> Late review time, no intro. Kev, what's your review? <sighs> Struggling with this one. And then I was thinking, and then I was thinking, I started watching this this Netflix show. It's called Scam. Scam? I think, Scam. I, I think I've seen that. I didn't see sc- Scam. Scrolling through. I didn't see it. Dude, I didn't watch it, though. So I'm intrigued by all this shit. So this guy travels to different countries. What is it travel. like a reality TV kind of Reality documentary. documentary. Okay, okay. So he travels to London. He travels to Mex- Mexico City to like all of these foreign places. All of these foreign places like India and and he does what the tourists do. 
and gets ripped off so you don't have to. And he shows you the little scams and everything. He went to Bangkok and and like like oh my god, where did he go? It was like some Indian country he went to. And he just approached the first person to get a taxi. Approached the first person to get a taxi, got in the taxi, and it was supposed to take an hour to get to his hotel from the airport. And the taxi stopped and this random person got in. And he's like, I'm your tour guide. I'm your tour guide. And this fucking guy is fucking pointing out all these other locations and this and that. And they were holding a holy ceremony in the street. And the tour guide got out and started people to, talking to the people that were praying. And he was like, yeah, they're not going to let us buy unless you pay him like 500 something of whatever their currency was. Wow. And just he gets ripped off in these situations. So, you know, not to get ripped off in these situations when you go on tour of these countries. That's pretty interesting. Does yeah. he like expose them at the end? Like, I'm you're on some scam. Of some of them. Yeah. For real. Like, like he'll go to he went to China. And he went into one of these these shops and he bought something that he thought or was told that was 2,000 years old. And he got it for like 175 US dollars. He's like, well, I'm buying something for 175 US dollars. It's obviously not 2,000 years old. So he went out and had it checked out and then took it back to the store. And he was like, yeah, you're fucking lying. It's cool. It's really neat. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Does he ever do like uh, stuff in the States or is it all travel? Uh, all travel. Uh, like, no, he went to New York City. He did go to New York City. He I'd like to see to- him do stuff like uh, what the when you get the phone calls, like you're behind in your taxes and yeah. like even go through that kind of scam. Okay. That would be neat. That would that, be neat. Yeah. But I it, I really enjoyed this show. I really enjoyed it. I watched every episode. I, I would have to give it like a seven and a half, eight. Wow. Yeah. Good, Kev. Yeah. Steve, do you have one? I got uh, a couple quick ones. My first quick one is Gatorade Zero. Oh, I play volleyball on Tuesdays. I usually drink the G2, which I, uh, I'm good with. It's like less calories or sugar or something. I see you have a Gatorade Frost sitting here. It's banging, by the way. I don't I've like had the those. Frost. No, not a fan. Well, if you're not a fan of that, the Gatorade Zero. Delicious. Trash. Oh, straight trash tastes like watered down like you had a jug of Gatorade and washed it out and then you poured a glass <laughs> 2.5 wow trash. wow trash <laughs> trash Gatorade zero you trash <laughs> they don't pay us and they're not going to because it's trash Mr. Steve says you're trash <laughs> so uh, the other thing I was going to talk about was last week uh, I took the wife and kids to Baltimore we went down to Inner Harbor for the day nice um, we did Saturday we walked around the Inner harbor i'm giving the inner harbor like a seven five there's a bunch of cool ships around a lot of cool stuff to do it's a little touristy there's like a bubba gump shrimp we eat at like the hard rock cafe hard rock i'm only giving like a five really okay. really yeah, not a good experience. It, it was not a good experience it's they have like burgers and that's it and they had weak beer list and it was like 80 bucks for us to eat lunch like holy shit it, and i had i had one beer the kids each had a meal. The wife had a salad and wings, and I had a burger. It was it was like eighty bucks. Eighty bucks? Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yo, Hard Rock, you can fuck yourself. Wow, it was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> uh, we stayed at the uh, Hampton Inn and Suites, which was like two blocks up from the Inner Harbor. We could walk it pretty easy. They had a pool for the kids. They loved it. Given that at eight, stayed at the hotel. We went to the aquarium the next day. Cool time going through the shark exhibit. I give the aquarium an eight point five. Was the aquarium expensive? The aquarium is a little expensive. I got. I have to look it up. I got the tickets at home. Gotcha. Um, I want to say it was one hundred fifty for the four of us. That's not too bad. It wasn't too bad. It's it's a little high. Was the hotel expensive? The hotel I actually got. I had some credit card points. Yeah, and um, so it cost me twelve bucks. Oh, can't beat that. No wonder you're giving it an eight. for the night. <laughs> They had free uh, free breakfast, the uh, free uh, breakfast the next morning. Kids love that. Can't beat that. So I was good with the hotel. So that's Down my uh, inner harbor experience. Wow. Very nice. Good, good job, for you. Steve. Good job. Steve's killing it tonight. Did like fucking nine reviews in like 30 seconds. Mr. Steve to you. Mr. Steve is 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 giving us a whimsical performance tonight, Kev. You're doing good too. Just okay. My next, uh, my, my review this week, we just started watching it this week, uh, Silicon Valley on HBO. Have you ever heard of it? Heard of it. Never it. Seen it. I think I've seen it. Um, 
it, we watched the first season. It's only eight episodes, and they're like a half hour each. Okay, it's, it's like one of their shorter shows. It's a comedy, right? Yeah, it's a comedy, but it's like kind of it's it's real techy. Okay, because they're like developing. Uh, you know, the the point of the show is that the main character basically came up with an algorithm that uh, it compresses files, music, movies, anything that you can think of, pictures, all that shit. And it compresses it really fast and um, like faster than anybody's ever seen. And he doesn't even know that he did it, but he works with like a bunch of different, you know, other techie kind of guys that just do different things. And um, somebody offers him $10 million for what he created. And he decides to take a smaller deal for a percentage of his thing to develop his own company. The problem is that he's like, totally dorking out the whole time and has no idea what the fuck he's doing. Um, it's really funny. The cast is great. Uh, the main character is the Verizon guy on the commercials now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. And uh, Zach Woods, this guy, he was from, he was in the yeah. office, right? Zach uh, Wood, I don't remember. He was, in the office? he was in something else. And this TJ Miller guy, he's in the uh, Deadpool yeah, movies. Volume. You know what yeah, I'm talking the about? The comedian. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, comedian. Yeah. He's hysterical in it. Uh, the cast is great. The whole plot line is great, and the soundtrack is very, very dope. Hip hop, a lot of hip hop stuff, a lot of hip hop stuff. It's good. I give season one a strong eight. I nice, a strong eight. It was like entertaining the whole way through. It's very like, like I said, techy. Okay, you know what I mean. Kind of like Big Bang Theory, but they can curse. Okay, and smoke weed and drink a lot. It's a really funny show. It's a funny show. <laughs> They're all dorking out. It's really good. The cast is great. So check it out. Nice. Yeah. HBO. They don't pay us. Is that just they're only through the first season or that's just what no, you've seen? No, they have five seasons apparently oh, and it's okay. coming back. Uh, all the rest of them are 10 episodes piece except for the most recent one, which was eight again. All right. Uh, but I believe it's coming back this fall. Okay. It's got kind of like an entourage vibe to it. To where to where it's just like a bunch about a bunch of friends that are doing something crazy, you know what I'm saying? But it's just in a different environment. Gotcha. It's like a they worked for like a Google type company, and that's who offered them all that money. But they like separated from it, and they're trying to do their own thing. Meanwhile, this like other companies trying to fuck their shit up. Gotcha. It's funny. So I got a question for you. You ready for the uh, this weekend issue? I am. Yeah, you ready? How much time do I got? Three minutes. All right. Plenty of time. I got a question for you. Okay. So, you know the word yes. Yes. Y E S. Yes. Spell it. Y E S. Y E S. Yes. Yes. What's, how do you pronounce it? E Y E S. How do you pronounce that? E Y E S. Yeah. How do you pronounce that? Yes. <laughs> oh. E Y E S. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? E Y E Y E S. Yes. E Y E O it. No. How do you pronounce no. it? Is this a fucking riddle? It. No. I T. E Y E S. Pronounce it. E Y E S. Pronounce that. That. E- <laughs> Come on, <laughs> dude. You know what I'm saying? That. No, I don't. I feel like he's trying to trick us somehow. I know. E E Y E S. E yes. No. Yes. Come on, guys. What, dude? I'm doing um, it. What are you I'm talking not following. about? You have a minute and a half to do this week in history. Watch me with these and okay. pronounce that. Watch me with these. Right, I got. I got them now. My I figured eyes. it out. What? Eyes. Eyes. <laughs> you dumbass. You dumbass. <laughs> Kev, you wasted so much time. <laughs> Such a piece of shit. At least you gave the answer this week. That's Unbelievable. True. That's true. Unbelievable. You think I'm playing around? Yeah. So you think about five cents. The problem is five that cents. you think I'm playing around. July first, nineteen or eighteen sixty three, the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, which marked the turning point in the Civil War, began. Uh, in nineteen sixty three, the post office in a, integrated Jesus Christ. It's five digits. Hurry up, code. Kev. The song is on. July third, nineteen sixty two, Jackie Robinson was the first African American to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. July 4th, 19 or 1776, the US declared independence from Great Britain. 1884, the Statue of Liberty was presented to the United States by the Paris. I got a plug uh, shit, Kev. July 5th, 1996. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh my god. 
Mr. Steve, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. That was me. a fantastic performance tonight by you. Kev, thank you can it. eat a dick. <laughs> Yo, you're just mad because you can't spell eyes. <laughs> MBNnetwork.com. You can go there. It's never been easier for you to find your new favorite podcast. Go to patreon.com slash Network to hear the rest of this episode. Actually, Kev, you did a fantastic job tonight. Thank you. You did great, except for that whole dumb riddle last at the end of it. E- just- yes. <laughs> e- yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. How do you spell? Pronounce E Y E S. Yes. <laughs> you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> All right.